morning or good afternoon it might be we're not exactly sure what time it is right now who really knows we've just come off about a 20 hour flight journey and you might be able to see we're still shrugging off a little bit of the effects of jet lag yeah among other things but uh, we've been here for about a day and we wanted to share with you some of the things that we've learned already after about 24 hours in Quito, Ecuador. Hi everyone, we're Erin Laurie. And within the first hour of arriving in a new country in Central America, we were flirting with a possible jail stay. We were already breaking the law here and we didn't even know about it. Yeah, it was completely unintentional. We had heard from some fellow travelers to dial up an Uber at the airport and that's what I did. So while we were waiting, we were approached by a lady taxi driver who said, who are you waiting for? And we just said, oh, our Uber. And she said, that's illegal in Ecuador. So right away we were shocked and said, really? But too late to change the plans, our driver was on his way. So mm -hmm. we got in the Uber with our lovely driver, Carlos, and um, a few minutes in decided to ask him, was it true Uber is illegal in Ecuador? Yes, it was. Now, the caveat on that is that it is illegal in Ecuador, but it's not enforced currently. They probably do, you know, uh, they probably enforce in, in mass here and there, but most of the time it goes unenforced. But then he says to us, oh, but I bet the lady taxi driver didn't tell you guys that there's scammy taxis out there. All the yellow ones that you see on the street, some are legit and some aren't. Um, some have cameras and some have fake cameras. Some you get in and they drop you two, three blocks from your place and you're forced to walk. And so he himself, Ecuadorian man, told us that he would not take a, any yellow taxi in the city of Quito. Unless he had previous history with that driver and knew them quite well. From more things we found out, we would probably do it the same way if we were to do it over again. Because the taxi system here is unreliable and us as foreigners who don't know anything about this city and how it works, I think if I was to go back, I would probably choose Uber again. So you could take those two pieces of information for what it's worth mm -hmm. and at least make an informed decision when you get here, which we were unable to do with the information we had. At the time. And one thing we would change though, I'm pretty sure you would agree, is when the lady approaches us and says, who are you waiting for? We are waiting for a friend. See. Si. I would totally say just a friend and then meander out the door and wait for the Uber driver. Yeah, my uncle or cousin or whatever. Whatever. You know what, you're getting really good at this. That's a good segue to talk about our next piece of information for you and that is safety. Safety. Lori and I have been all over the place. We've lived in multiple cities in different countries and you know we often hear from different sources, the mainstream media, the concerned parents, whatever. <laughs> hey be careful in that country where I heard it's unsafe for this, that and the other thing. But if we're being honest, once we get into that country on the other side, we feel it's as safe or safer mm -hmm. than our home country. Yes. Now, when we arrived in Ecuador, the first two Ecuadorian citizens that we talked to that spoke any English, in both cases, the first thing that they wanted us to know and wanted and that they wanted to talk about was that Ecuador is not very safe right now mm -hmm. and that you need to exercise more caution than you normally would when you're out and about on the street. We're recording this now in November 2022, and that's all the citizens want to talk to us about is that the um, the general safety in and around Quito and Ecuador is is not very good right now and they're kind of embarrassed about it. Yeah. And so it, it's watching which neighborhoods you go to. Well, as a complete foreigner, we don't know what those neighborhoods are right now. Um, don't don't go out alone. Don't go out after dark. So we're just going to adhere to that for the first um for the first few days and we'll just go out during the day and the next few days and the next few days and, and all we'll, the days and we'll go out together and you know we'll just be smart at least about you know where our phones are where our purses and our wallets are etc now most of these incidents relate to things like uh, robbing and pickpocketing so not generally violence but you know mm -hmm. these things probably lead to one another they're connected eventually so Take that information for what it's worth. You may be a seasoned traveler used to being in dangerous places, or this may influence you on where you may or may not end up on your next trip. Mm -hmm. If you're finding value in some of the things we're sharing with you, this would be a great time in the video to go ahead and press the like button. Before we arrived in Quito, we had heard several times about the altitude and the effect it can have on people that are coming from a drastically different elevation. Mm -hmm. And when they arrive here, they can feel the effects of it. 
And we have done this kind of thing before, gone from our elevation in our home city, which is about 2,200 feet, 635 meters, give or take, flying over here and arriving at over 9,300 feet. Uh, I think that's a little over 2,800 meters. And we can now tell you from experience, after being here a day or so, that uh, we have noticed significant effects from the elevation change. Not really. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, one example is, is um, a normal activity of walking up the stairs up to our apartment here and normally speaking you know a little bit of elevation and heart rate uh, that's about it well here it's like total heart palpitations shortness of breath yeah, resting at the door with the key for a minute it, like do i need to sit down for this it was crazy so it's significant difference there the other one is that we're feeling a general lethargic low energy state and almost like a jet lag yeah. Uh, so we've only changed uh, two hours in time zone, so we can't really attribute it to jet lag. No. Yes, there's some fatigue from the 20 hour flight, but I think a good portion of it is based on the elevation. So yeah. if you're living right now in a, in a higher elevation location and you're familiar with that kind of living, maybe it won't affect you as much. But if you're coming from a mid to low elevation uh, place, you probably should anticipate some effects of the change in elevation and likely like we did we went ahead and planned basically nothing the first day and we might encourage you to do something similar yeah we kept our activities to eating drinking and showering pretty much for the first 24 hours so walking down to the corner restaurant there was about <laughs> the height of it to get some food that was it well speaking of food i mean 24 hours in quito so far that's pretty much all we've done we found a really nice local place like two doors down not even a block and went in there and had a beautiful breakfast for or lunch i'm not even sure what time of day it is right now let it alone, was pretty foggy i think they called it almuerzo that's lunch so we paid about five us dollars and we both ate on that had a cup of coffees um yeah it was delicious too the people were super friendly very welcoming and patient with our basic espanol yeah, I think, did you mention this already? I think we both ate a meal and had coffees for yeah. around $5, five US. Five US, yeah. Yeah, see, I'm not feeling the effects of the altitude <laughs> at all. I'm sharp as a tack. <laughs> um, the other thing that Lori figured out, which came in super handy, was a food delivery app. And so maybe you'd like to share yeah. what you found out there. Sure, the one that we were recommended was called is called Rappi. And I had started the process back in Canada. And I'm mentioning this because if you're in your home country, download it and set it up, get the codes and get that all started because I forgot to do the verification code. And so here we are in Ecuador and luckily they had WhatsApp to send the verification code. So anyway, figured that all out and decided to go on and browse around and found a really great um, opportunity to order some groceries. So actual chicken, raw chicken, tortillas and some fruits and veg. So we had that delivered to the house, um, which was awesome because we didn't have to go and test the safety on the street. We just had it brought right to the door. Just got our Rappi grocery deliveries. Four big bags. I think it was under 30 US. And our driver just delivered it. <laughs> and then I took some time and looked around for restaurants and we were really surprised by the cost of food in Ecuador on Rappi. The delivery costs were pretty minimal, a dollar or two, but the actual food pizza or a couple burgers was $10 US, $15 US and up $20 US for one meal. And so I was just a little bit surprised. Um, we will use it to save our time, but just a heads up, it wasn't like a buck or two for a meal like we were used to in Indonesia or Mexico sometimes. Yeah, so keep in mind that, you know, the restaurant here down at the corner that we're saying we've ate, we two meals for five dollars we're staying in a neighborhood that's basically all uh local citizens and almost no tourists so you're basically eating in a, a very local restaurant with local prices yeah and so uh, if you're in a touristy location when you're here you're likely going to see higher prices than that and that's actually maybe a good tip the very first tip we can bring you 24 hours in quito is eat on the street is going to be way more affordable for you than even a delivery app so, mm -hmm. well, how is Quito? What kind of a city is Quito? Quito is, um... I would say a typical Central South American city. It is a symphony of noises, energy, and hustle bustle all day. But that's actually under describing our first 24 hours in Quito. Lori and I have been 
and experienced and lived in some noisy cities around the world. In Mexico City, for example, some cities in Indonesia were very energetic. This city here so far, I would say, is at least as noisy as that, if mm -hmm. not more so. So you're going to hear, it's going to be quite a bit noisier than what you're used to if you're listening to this video and you live in the US, Canada, Australia, UK, somewhere like that. You're going to come to this city here and it's going to be significantly noisier than yeah. what you're accustomed to to hearing in a day. Absolutely. Now, maybe it's the street that we rented our little apartment on, but from about 8 or 9, maybe 8 a.m. to for sure uh, noon, it's non-stop dogs barking and horns honking and U-turns in the street and people crossing and zigzagging and yelling at each other on the street. Sirens. Yeah, yes. it's, it's quite something. And that's coming from uh, a couple that has traveled six months a year for the last 12 years. So we feel like we're pretty accustomed uh, to the noises that we're, we're experiencing here. And we are, we're not complaining. We knew what we were coming into and we wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. We're simply saying that Quito is probably one of the, the loudest cities that we've had the um, experience of enjoying so far. so far. So on that note, one of our first tips for you as far as the noise of the city goes is to get, bring and use a good pair of earplugs before you come down here. And I would suggest that you level up from the simple um, cork foam ones because they're just simply not going to be enough. These ones here are silicone. You jam them into the third mushroom uh, until <laughs> it hurts a little bit and it's almost total blackout. Yeah, it works awesome. Uh, anything less than these and you're probably wasting your time. So uh, I'll just demonstrate right now. <laughs> we'll put a link in the description box. <laughs> what? Link in the description box. I'm getting nothing. <laughs> He's kidding, uh, but actually you're right. When we're in bed and I talk to you, you're like, I can't hear you, honey. I love you too. <laughs> so get these earplugs. They They're are really awesome. Good. Follow us for more recipes. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> well, it's not that. It's so. All right, let's touch on the weather and the climate here. We had been looking at forecasts before we came here, so we knew what to expect, give or take temperature wise. 16 to 18 on a yeah. sunny day, 10 to 13 on a cloudy rainy day, and about 8 to 10 overnight. So we. We thought, you know, we're packed Celsius. and ready for this. <laughs> Celsius, right. We thought we're packed and ready for this. We're okay. But once we arrived, there's quite a bit more moisture in the air around here. And I might give you a quick look at what we're looking at right now. But the clouds are building. It's mid-afternoon. It's quite, uh, quite gray. It looks like it could rain at any point. And the reason why I describe that to you is because, yes, those temperatures are accurate. But there's so much moisture and humidity in the air that if it gets chilly outside or in your apartment it kind of goes through your clothes and into your core and you tend to be chilled for quite some time after that so if you're considering spending time in the mountains of ecuador and you're thinking oh should i or should i not pack the extra clothes you know the base layer or the puffy jacket or the toque or if you're american beanie <laughs> uh, then i would just go ahead and encourage you to, to pack that you're going to be glad you did yeah we, we pack some little slippers, um, and it all depends too on where you're renting. Does your place have rugs, carpeting? Ours was fully, it's fully tiled, and it's cold on the feet. So socks, I know it, it sounds so basic, pack your socks and pack a slipper. Um, <laughs> it makes a really big difference. Yeah, so right now, one of the most exciting things we're looking at is we have a little fireplace in the uh, apartment here, and we're uh, currently looking at grabbing some wood and having some nice little crackling fires to take the edge off. So yeah, we'll keep you posted. <laughs> yeah, little tip for you guys. The last one, and it also relates to weather a little bit and timing, is if you're here for a limited time and you've got a bunch of sightseeing and tourist activities in your itinerary while you're enjoying Quito, my general recommendation for you is to plan those things as early in the day as you possibly can. The general weather pattern that we've experienced here and we've heard it on other videos is that if the day is going to be clear at all, it will start out clear in the morning mm -hmm. and then generally the clouds will build throughout the afternoon frequently ending or culminating late afternoon early evening in rain showers so and wind and the wind yeah the wind has built throughout the day as well so if you have things that you want to see you know photograph or mm -hmm. you have a viewpoint or a hike your best chance of viewing that location will be in the early part of the day. Those are some of the points and pieces of information that we've learned after being in Ecuador for a day and some of the things that we wish we would have known before we showed up here. We recommend you watch this video next. If you like some of the things we're sharing on this video and you'd like to support the channel for free, go ahead and click the subscribe button 
and the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. If you'd like to continue to follow our misadventures the next six <laughs> months or so in Ecuador and then another country, we'll see what happens there. My name's Air. I'm Lori. And this is Plan Free. Thanks for watching.